What's the word, y'all? We wanted chaos in the play-in, and we got that tonight. Now, I do want to say I'm filming this right after the game is done. Like, Anthony Davis, Dennis Shooter, and LeBron are giving post-game interviews. So, I'm letting you know that now because by the time this comes out, you might have got stories and stuff like that. This is right after the buzzer reaction to the play-in tonight. And when I talk about stories that might be out, I'm, I'm highly expecting to see a story when I wake up tomorrow morning that says Anthony Edwards played through a shoulder sprain or something like that. Because you did not know he had a hard fall early in this game. And this was the most passive I have ever seen Anthony Edwards. I'm talking whether it was random game in October or the post. This was the most passive I have ever seen him. And, and we got that last play in the uh, in overtime, the one that kind of was the sealer, where Mike Conley got the steal. And it's basically a three-on-one fast break. And Anthony Edwards got the ball. And they're down by two. And he kicked it off to Torian Prince. I, I, of course, this, I guess it's a good look, right? Torian Prince is a good three-point shooter and stuff. But I just feel like normal Anthony Edwards sees a one-on-one -on -one opportunity with him and little old Dennis Schroeder, and he's trying to go through him for an easy lay, but in this one, he passed it off. And it felt like a lot of this game, he was off the ball, not even being a decoy because he wasn't moving. So he, I just had, there's no way he, he wasn't playing through an injury. And if he wasn't playing through an injury, I'm just surprised at this performance because last year, you can't say it's the, the lights are, are too bright because last year he went into a playing game and dropped 30 and then he went into a playoff series and had a hell of a series. So it can't be the lights being too bright. He's Anthony Edwards. So I'm just assuming it was some type of injury because boy, I, I, I was disappointed. Before we get deep into it, let me remind you about our presenting sponsor for this season, Price picks. Hit the link in the description down the Price Picks app and use code Kenny because you're matching all deposits up to $100 for new players. Price picks is just you versus the numbers. You pick two to six of your favorite or least favorite athletes. You look at something like points, rebounds, assists. You look at the number. You decide if you think the player is going to have more or less than that number. Just that simple. You can make an entry. I made an entry today. It didn't hit. But that's the chance you take. So if you're interested, hit the link in the description down the Price Picks app and use code Kenny because you're matching all deposits up to $100. Please play responsibly. I think this game is going to be remembered by it being a close game and the Dennis Schroeder shot and the eventual Anthony Davis foul. But it was very, oh man, this was some ugly, ugly basketball, bro. I made a tweet that it, it was genuinely some of the worst basketball I've watched in a while. Um, <laughs> and that's, that's saying, I've watched, the, I've watched the Bulls 82 times this year, y'all. Um, the last six minutes of the fourth quarter, plus the, the overtime as well, the Timberwolves were as cold as any team can be. And we had fluidity. We had great passing, great cuts, great shot making over the first couple quarters for the Timberwolves. And then that all went dead. This was like a defensive, two defensive juggernauts potentially going head to head. And I can't tell if it was just great defense or just the offense was awful. Yeah, on both ends. But specifically in the Timberwolves because they had this game. Um, and, and they were under talented they were they were the least talented team of the two obviously especially when missing jd mcdaniels and rudy gobert but they had this game mike conley gave them one of the best performances we got from mike conley in a minute carthony towns at least early in the game was dominant one leg at fadeaways and stuff but the real turning point in this game for me is when uh, when uh carthony towns picked up that fifth foul where he was jostling with Anthony Davis so positioning for a rebound and he hooked them a little bit more than he should have and they got the fifth foul. And that was the thing we talked about on the podcast that was going to be the determining factor in this one particular game is whether or not Carl Anthony Towns could stay out of foul trouble. The answer was he could not. Um, and then later down in the stretch, because he was playing with five fouls, it just felt like he couldn't have been as aggressive on the uh, defensive glass and it led to some Anthony Davis buckets or Anthony Davis getting that great old lob pass from LeBron James coming down and Carthony Towns can't do anything because too much contact is now a foul. So him standing out of foul trouble would have been big, but it's Carthony Towns. It's what he has done for the entirety of his career. And if you look at his numbers since he came back from his injury, I mean, he's been in really deep foul trouble. We're talking five fouls a lot of those games and it happened again today. Chris Finch tried early in this one to... To do the, since we don't have a backup center, we gonna have Nathan Knight play. That didn't last long. I mean, soon as Carl Anthony Towns came off the floor, the Lakers went on their run and brought the game back. And then he had to come to the realization that if Carl Anthony Towns is not on the floor, we've got to play small ball. And at least early in this one, Carl Anthony Towns, oh, not Carl Anthony Towns, Kyle Anderson was everywhere. He's getting blocked. He's getting steals. He's hitting shots. And then, of course, all of that faded away as well. Got to give a lot of credit to the, the next men on the Lakers. Um, Dennis Schroeder with, with D'Angelo Russell, not having any ice in his veins uh, today and missing all of the shots. Did a shooter came in clutch, obviously, with the big old shot there. But more than that, I mean, he played some good defense down the stretch. And he also hit some more shots down there. But it, it was 
a game that they sh it shouldn't have been this close. Let's be real. They won it. Now they can look into being a seven seed, going against the, the going against the Grizzlies and getting that matchup because that's gonna be fun. Is Shannon Sharp gonna pull up to a game? I hope so. You would have wanted it to be a little bit better uh, than being gassed against this team that was missing, you know, Jaden McDaniels and Rudy Gobert. But a win is a win, and now they can look forward to the next series where it's not gonna get easier. I, I was telling to my boy Mike because we were watching this together on his on his Twitch um, that this was the easiest it was gonna get. You know. This is the easiest matchup they could have got. So just because they in, don't think that, whew, sigh of relief. Like, you have to go do it now. The goal wasn't just to make the playoffs. I mean, eventually it was, right, after starting off as a 13th seed. You want to just get in there. Now you're in, and now it's not like, all right, the season is won. You want to go get that next championship, right? That That is the ultimate goal, and it's gonna, it's only harder from here. You got the you got the Memphis Grizzlies. If you get through that, you got to go against either the Warriors or the Minnesota or, or the or the, uh, the San Sacramento Kings. <sighs> it's late. Um... And then you got to get the Denver Nuggets or the Suns or whatever. Like, this is a very hard path. So this is the easiest, and it's done. And now you got to move on to the next one. And for the for the Timberwolves, I mean, next game, they will have Rudy Gobert back. Um, it didn't look like they really needed him on the defensive side today, which is which is kind of eye-opening because um, that's where his value lies. I mean, it doesn't really lie on the defensive on the offensive side. Um, I just thought that with no Rudy Gobert, the game from Anthony Edwards was going to be a lot better. Again, I'm just expecting that's going to be some type of injury that get called down. Right on cue, Dane Moore tweeted, Chris Finch mentioned Anthony Edwards was dealing with cramping. So it was something. Um, but if you just get a C-minus performance from Ant, this is probably a win instead of, I mean, a D, it was like a D-minus game. I'm, I'm, I'm discrediting the defense. The defense was good, but like that's not, you, you, they need the offense. I, when you go six minutes without scoring in an NBA game, you need offense. Um, so I would say it was a D minus game for real. The first game today wasn't as interesting, wasn't as exciting, um, because the Atlanta Hawks just ran away with it. a game that no, not really many people predicted the Atlanta Hawks were going to win. I had the Miami Heat personally because it just felt like they've had Trey Young's number. I mean, you look at all the stats in the last 13 games when these two teams went head to head. Uh, uh, Trey Young was basically terrible for his standards. Only by only comparing him to the normal version of himself, he was he had been bad throughout the stretch of this. But you know what? I cannot look over the fact that Bam Adebayo was so, so very disappointed to me today. The defense was good. De the defense for Bam is always going to be there. But boy, oh boy, I just, want, I just, they needed more. I wanted more. As a guy that's been a fan of Bam for a long time and know what he can be on the offensive side, it just was, none of it was there today. He got outplayed by Click Appella, who ended with like four total points, I want to say. So he killed on the glass. And it's just, it just wasn't enough. Kyle Lowry had his best game as a Heat. A Heat? I, I do this all the time. He had his best game on the Miami Heat. And it didn't matter. Jimmy Butler had a stinker. That, that was the guy. He's the guy. You just a one game elimination. Who do you want on your team? It's a short list of people. And you don't get to like number six or seven without mentioning the name Jimmy Butler. He didn't have his game. He wasn't on his game today. And this is what I meant when I when I made the video a little while ago talking about how how four through whatever of the Miami Heat are some of the worst in basketball. And you saw that on full display today where the Atlanta Hawks were able to rely, at least today, I don't know if it's going to last in the series uh, next round. Let's be real. The teams that are winning the play-in out east is not making a lot of noise, right? Bogdanovich, Sadiq Bey, Anyeka Kongu, Jalen Johnson. They had four players off their bench to give them double-digit points today. While the Miami Heat, Kyle Lowry gave them 30, and that's it. They had two starters that didn't crack 10, and Bam just got over 10. So we talk about the lack of depth for the Miami Heat. That was on full display today, and you had the contrary for the Atlanta Hawks, and I was I was super impressed. For a team that had been wavering all season long of being one game under 500, 500, or one game over, this was one of their best performing games. And that was with DeJounte not having to go crazy. Or Trey Young, he had a good game, but this one like a supernova game for him. It felt like the others all came to play today. And that was something that was hit or miss for them all season long. Again, feels a little bit different talking about the Easter Conference playing because whoever wins these two games, and we see the Atlanta Hawks on the first one, uh, they're probably going to get steamrolled in the, in the first round of the playoffs. We're talking about the Milwaukee Bucks and the Boston Celtics, two of the favorites to win the entire thing. Um, so, shout out to Atlanta for making it. Um, I think a lot of the conversation is more steered around the, the report from Kevin O'Connor. They even mentioned it on the broadcast that Kevin O'Connor came out with this report about um, the Atlanta Hawks having a green light to potentially facilitate trades around Trey Young, yada, yada, yada. The Heat did go on a they low run. It was like 22-4 to four run or whatever. But it didn't feel sustainable, um, and it wasn't. 
it, it wasn't. Anyway, we'll see y'all tomorrow. We talk about Bulls Raptors for whatever reason. And then uh, OKC Pelicans. That's that, that's the one that we looking forward to.